drink cinema. Cheese. Okay, another thing to talk about. Yes. Uh, if you're looking on the, if you're watching on the YouTube, you will have seen in other episodes me click my pen too much. So that's going over there. Um, this is a new thing on the YouTube. Mm-hmm. So uh, if you're watching on the YouTube, oh, welcome to another bit of Two Drink Cinema. Thank you for following us. Make sure you subscribe. So another <laughs> a thing, the internet has funny things on it, right? It has it's a whole lot of what shit. It's, well, that's the second thing it was yeah, invented yeah. for. Um, one thing that uh, a web, a thing that I follow on Facebook does is a lot of things didn't happen this week and these things didn't happen the most. Like people tweet things that have happened and you're like, oh. bullshit, that didn't happen. One of them was, and telling people to subscribe to our YouTube channel, um, which I'm doing now, subscribe to our YouTube channel, mm-hmm. reminded me. It says, it, and it says something like, um, my parents just left my house and my five-year-old said, make sure you hit the subscribe button as they left. He watches so much YouTube, he thinks that means <laughs> goodbye. <laughs> Oh, that's bad so parenting right there. That's, no, that's well, an example parenting. of a lot of things didn't happen this week. This is one that didn't happen the most. No, that's not happening. Yeah, okay. A kid's not watching that much YouTube that they think saying goodbye to their grandparents, they say, make sure you hit subscribe. Yeah, a kid, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But make sure you do hit subscribe to the Two Drink Cinema channel. Um, and what was the point of that story? <laughs> Me saying, make sure you subscribe to our channel, reminded me of the meme. Okay. Okay. Let's keep talking about memes on our podcasts. So, uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. I've said it four times now. If you don't subscribe, we're not friends anymore. Ooh. Are we not friends anymore? (laughs) (laughs) You can't subscribe to your own YouTube channel. Yeah. All right. So, now we're going to talk about something a little bit more... Now, yes, a little bit more not. relevant. We said uh, earlier on we wouldn't do a lot of now stuff, but um, when things come up that excite us, we will, like the Oscars, yes. like Star Wars Day, Me. and like the new release, the new version of West Side Story, uh, directed by Steven Spielberg. Yes. A new trailer, teaser trailer came out during the week, uh, and one of your comments was straight away was, Strange to think of Steven Spielberg as a musical director. Yeah, I can't really think it. Obviously, Steven Spielberg in his career has directed a lot of different movies. Yeah. Um, if you think of Jaws, Jaws, e. you know, the summer blockbusters. Yes. But then back. also like but Catch also Me If like You Can. Schindler's List. Yep. And Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. So a lot of as well as then separate to that producing a lot of different like he produced Back to the Future. I'm going to mention it every episode. Just yes. be ready for it. It'll Star be like Wars. it'll be like in Seinfeld. Every episode, there's a Superman figure somewhere in Jerry's apartment. Right. You have to find the reference that I jam into Back to the Future in every episode of Two Drink Cinema. Yep. So he has produced a lot of different things as well as directing a lot of different things. So over his now 50 year career, it's probably about time he did a musical. Yeah. But is it? Like, does he need to? Well, like, we've both watched the trailer. Yeah, and it it's is a short it's a, one. It's a pretty short trailer, but it also shows you enough that it is kind of, from what you can see, it is sticking true to the original stage show. Well, it's it, yeah, I th- it's sticking tr- true to the original story yes. that was done well, obviously, on stage and then was done well... In the what year? 61. The 1961 uh, movie with Natalie Wood voiced by... Marnie Nixon. Throwback. Who is Marnie Nixon? I'm playing Jeopardy right yeah. now. Is that um, <laughs> oh, no, that's a throw forward. That's a throw forward. <laughs> um, to when we talked about Marnie Nixon. No, that was the first episode. Oh, yeah, because you... Because getting to know you. Getting to know you yeah. from The King and I. Um, Marnie Nixon. Not... So it's... yeah, And then... My first reaction was obviously I'm excited to see it because I love the movie and the musical and the music 
in it. Yes. So I've seen it on stage as well, and it's very impressive. I was... I don't know if I had read an article incorrectly or I had just decided it was a possibility in my own mind, but I had somewhere in my head that it was it was going to be a more modern setting. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I would if I was making it, I would yes. probably try and make it in a modern setting. And then I, I remember one of the discussions I had when it first came out that he was doing a new version and that somehow it had referenced he might be doing it in a more modern setting is... It's all done by text. No, but it's it's not. They'll tweet each other. The, the racism in New York, and we're not going to pretend racism doesn't exist because it does, and in the States it's still an issue and whatever. But we're not going to get political. But the, the, the race issue is not Puerto Rican. Predominantly, no. That's not the main. No, no. It's not, yeah. So, I shouldn't say main race issue. If you make... A movie that's based on two races being against each other, it's less likely that a gang war between white Americans and Puerto Ricans is what's going to happen in 2020. Yeah, but in, in the in 50s. Manhattan. But in the 50s, that was yes. the thing. But the trailer has shown us that it is uh, sticking true to that time setting. Yep. And it is using the, the same music. Yeah. Uh, which obviously you have to. Um, what I did think, though, is that it seemed a bit darker. In terms of theme? Yeah, in terms of... I don't know how you could make <laughs> no, but Romeo like, and Juliet a musical version darker. <laughs> no, but just a darker... Like, the story, obviously, people die... And it is a gang, a race-related gang war. Yep. But other than the rumble and the deaths, West Side Story, the 1961 Natalie Wood, is not a dark film. I feel yes. like okay. Spielberg may have made this one generally darker. Do you think he's taken out tone. the comic relief? characters there's a couple in there officer krupke no i feel like that might that still name. be there but if you think about west side story the original movie as a whole how you would present that in a trailer it, it the trailer i don't think would be so dark or is that a promotional thing to just make the trailer dark but the movie is still going to have G. Officer Krupke and I Feel yeah, Pretty and yeah. the nice uh, songs. I think it, I think it does well of showing the base of the movie because the trailer obviously shows that there is a bit of violence and tension and a race war. Yep, and that the the whole thing is the love story. The fact that the song that they chose to put over the trailer is somewhere. Yes. Because that's the ultimate. That's the big song in the. But it well, is. It is. Big song. Um, it is a bit of even. I'm not going to bang on about the darker thing, but it, it does seem to be a more serious in tone. Okay. Uh, arrangement of somewhere. That's probably just for the trailer. Yeah, but it. But like. But it's more serious than when she sings it to him when he gets shot at the end. Spoiler alert. Okay. Maybe that's the version they went with and not the version that they sing yes. together. Yeah, because it won't be. Okay. My thing was looking at the visuals, it looks too clean. Mm. Like if you look at the when they're on the street and people dancing, the shops in the background and then the dance at the gym bit they, they show, it all looks very bright and... Yeah, you know what I mean. Like it doesn't look like a rough neighborhood in New York. It looks a little bit more like suburban Baltimore, nineteen sixty three, and hairspray. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to jam that in every episode too. Um, but it was relevant as long as it doesn't <laughs> okay. look too clean, so that it looks fake to the point of Rock of Ages, the movie musical. Yeah, okay. You're going to put that in everything you've mentioned. No, that well, a few times. we're talking about musicals, and clean is 1963 Baltimore and Hairspray in terms of recent movie musicals. Yes. Too clean, 
Rock of Ages, the movie musical, looks nothing like the Sunset Strip would have looked in the 80s. Yeah, true. Okay. Like, I'll give you that one. Um, that's gone too far. I didn't um, think too much about that clean look. I didn't pick that up too much. Yeah. I just thought that was more a little bit of artistic license of making a, a nice looking movie. I suppose in the original movie, there's no other buildings. There's pretty much four places they go. The One, gym, the shop, the, the streets. Gym, the shop, the streets. And when at the and under the, the highway. The alleys the alleys behind each of their and houses. The, like basketball playground thing yeah, the where playground, it starts yep. and ends. Um so maybe they I hadn't noticed that in the original movie, but maybe it's just going to be more of an art direction choice to show di- that there are other shops there. Something that's very interesting I found as well was nobody sings in the trailer. Except for the somewhere over the well, top. Well, yeah, but a lot of trailers have songs over them. Yeah. And I, I feel a couple of movies that are musicals have done that in their trailer. And I think La La Land was one of them that just made a trailer that looked like a movie. And then people went and were like, what do you mean this is a musical? Did, it was just meant to be a rom-com with yeah, Ryan people Gosling are just going, and Emma Stone. Yeah, people are just going, oh, I'm going to see a story of Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. And then Ryan and then, Gosling attempts to play the piano and sing. And then you just see that's just a rip-off of Singing in the Rain. Yeah, but West Side Story is a rip-off of Romeo and Juliet. It's not a rip-off, it's an adaptation. But they've done it well. La La Land didn't do it as well. <laughs> Controversial. Also, in case you didn't know, West Side Story is Romeo and Juliet. Yeah, um, but you. But people are going to say that every story of forbidden love is Romeo, Romeo and, Juliet. and Juliet. But no, this is actually this is actually, Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Um, one other thing I was a little bit excited about in the trailer was a little pop up cameo of Rita Moreno. Oh yes. Who from my from the looks of it looks like she might play in the original movie Doc. The guy who owns the drugstore. Yes, I think I read that. Yeah. So Rita Moreno plays Anita in the original movie. Maria's yeah. cousin in the movie, um, whose boyfriend is killed by Maria's sister in law. Oh, yeah, yeah, sister in law. Whose uh, boyfriend is Maria's brother, yes. who is killed by Tony yep. because uh, he kills Riff, Tony's best friend. Okay. So Mercutio. at least three people die. That's why I said cousin, because in in their Romeo cousins and Juliet, in Romeo okay. and Juliet, right? Um, I've, I'm, that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. I think no yep. matter what trailer came out, no matter what, if every critic in the world bagged mm. the shit out of it and said this is the worst movie ever made, I would still go and see it. I, I it is. I didn't put it in my top five, but. West Side Story, the original 1961, is a movie that I can just watch. Yeah. And as a soundtrack, as a musician, um, it is a soundtrack that I can put on. It's incredibly in complex music. Yeah. Um, and it's incredibly difficult to play. I remember I played it um, when our school did it as their musical. 20 years ago. What would that have been? 2001. Thanks. 20 years ago. Um and I played one of the trumpet books and... One of the lower trumpet books? No, second <laughs> second trumpet, um, which is the one that has all the trumpet solos. Oh, okay. But luckily, just the no, guy that normally plays himself. trumpet next to James Morrison was sitting next to me, so I gave him <laughs> the solos. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Um, the percussionist that year was really impressive in our school production, but we don't need to talk about that on the thing. I think she was impressive everything. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I hope she's listening. I hope she is. Oh, my God, <laughs> what could you imagine? No, anyway. Um, I, so uh, it, I, think, I think it will be good. I'm kind of also – part of me is hoping that it is a remake, but part of me doesn't want it to be shot for shot. Yep. You could already see there was one shot in the trailer, which I suppose you're going to do whenever you make the movie or the stage show or whatever. The ga- two of, gangs walking towards each other. Well, that. And also um, 
Maria on her balcony, balcony step thing. Yep. Tony looking up at her. That shot was almost yes. like, let's copy that shot from the movie. But also, but also, that's the way you stage Romeo and Juliet. Yes. Yep. So that's going to be copied no matter how you do it. You're going to have to. You have to have the balcony scene. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And then you have to sing a song. And fall in love at first sight and then yeah. dance. And, blah, blah, blah. and young hearts run free. Yeah. Oh, no, that's Baz Luhrmann. That's, yeah. yeah, that's, that's, Romeo. Romeo that's the Juliet. other Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Um, when doves cry. I don't think I've seen that. Romeo and Juliet. Baz, Baz Luhrmann's Luhrmann. Romeo and Juliet. You had to watch it for school. I think I've seen bits of it. I didn't watch it for school. I think we did, year nine, we did Romeo and Juliet. And watched it in class. And our school had a thing of showing a movie version of it. Of a Shakespeare, yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, which, what was it? Which Macbeth? was not... Yeah, Macbeth. <laughs> it was the <laughs> Hugh Hefner produced version where the scene with the witches, they're all naked. The witches have their tits out. Um, but Here it you go, also, year tens. It also was like, hey, let's watch a movie it, at school. But for me, someone who prefers to watch a movie over reading a book, yeah, not a great choice. Because if they said, we're going to watch the movie, go, oh, it's a movie, I don't need to read this book. You know, the the best timing of a movie version of a book ever was Year 11 Literature. We were studying Emma by Jane Austen. Yeah. Jane Austen's a tough read for anybody, let alone for Year 11s. Yes. And the night before we were meant to start studying it, it was on Channel 10. <laughs> and I think only one person had seen the ad in our class on the Friday or whatever. Yeah. But by the end of Friday, everybody in our Year 11 <laughs> literature class knew it. So everyone Sunday night was tuned in. It was would have been the highest rating thing on Channel 10 that weekend. Because yeah. every kid studying Emma that year would have yeah. been watching it. Do you reckon there was somebody who knew that? It's like somebody who worked at Channel 10. The program their director kids, for Channel 10. It's in Year 11 <laughs> yeah. going... Uh, my kid hasn't read this book. Can we put Emma on? And I'm like, yeah, sure. Nobody's watching us. The footy's on. No, the the guy from Channel 10's gone, can I borrow the copy of Emma to show my kid on the weekend? Oh, why? <laughs> oh, because Year 11 Lit studying it. And someone's yeah. like, oh, my kid's oh, doing Year 11 ra- Lit. Oh, my boost. kid's doing it. <laughs> ratings boost. Let's put it on. We'll give it a, well, yeah, it'll rate more than showing true lies every six months yeah. as they did throughout the 90s. Um, but back to West Side Story. Yeah, please. <laughs> I think it's one of those movies you really, oh, I don't know, I'm scared, but you really can't fuck it up. But they're the things that do get fucked up. Like? When you say, like, when you go to a pub, you, you go, can't I'll fuck ha- up a palmer. You go, I'll have the palmer. You can't fuck up a palmer. I've had many fucked up palmers. I had one in Brisbane. That had bechamel sauce on it. That's not uh, that's so not a palmer. You can fuck up a palmer by putting bechamel on it. That's not a palmer. Well, it was on their menu as a palmer. I think they should be shut down. <laughs> um, but that's, that's well. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Anastasia. Very aggressive. <laughs> um, Anastasia, I've just heard about bechamel sauce on a palmer. <laughs> Go back into lockdown. <laughs> I thought you were referring to the singer Anastasia, and I was like, "What no, is she? Baby, come do, on. do you want to leave her? Leave them outside alone?" I was like, "Are you out of love for the bechamel sauce?" I just had no idea what you were going with that, and then I worked Would it out. Have been better. If Premier's name but, is Anastasia. Excuse me, Miss Palachuk, Palachay, Palachi. Go back into go back into lockdown. Um, because somebody is serving a palm up oh, with bechamel sauce on it. It's and un-Australian. The state needs to pause yeah. until that is sorted out. So you can fuck up a palmer. You, you could potentially fuck up West Side Story. You can fuck up a movie musical as well. Because we anybody said if a lot. Because anybody that has, anybody like me that went and saw Clint Eastwood directed Jersey Boys movie oh. would tell you that it was, it, you can make a movie musical unenjoyable. It was not great. Also, I'm not I'm gonna mention it again. Rock of Ages. Okay. We'll just, I've seen Rock of Ages on stage three times. I love it. I've watched Rock of Ages the movie one and a half times. Yeah. Because I tried I decided to give it one time and then I decided oh because my mate likes it. The movie? Yeah. And you're and, still friends with him. Yeah. And So I gave it another time and got halfway through and I'm like, actually, no. Mm. Sorry, mate. 
So at some point this year, I don't know the date, West Side Story will come out. November or December. That makes sense because it was kind of a teaser trailer. So we'll get little bits and pieces as we go along of the new West Side Story directed by Steven Spielberg. Um, Not a known cast uh, except Ansel Egghort is probably the biggest name in the cast. Um, And so interesting fact also, I just this popped up before, in The Dance at the Gym, the guy who runs the dance plays Gomez Adams in the TV series. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. Some listeners might not have. Um, Also, with the West Side Story being released this year, it was meant to be released 2020. But got delayed because of COVID. Uh, there's lots of things delayed because of COVID. Yeah. So they reckon because there were other movies. Went harping back to the Oscars. Mm. There was movies that they talked about wouldn't have got a lot a look in or as much attention or Oscar nominated because other big movies like West Side Story and that would have been well, that's released in. Also, could have been the Academy just going. We're going to nominate Steven Spielberg because he's Steven Spielberg, Steven Spielberg yeah. ahead of someone who probably deserves it. Not that I'm saying Steven Spielberg and doesn't deserve think, Oscars. We, they're like, oh, we still owe, we still owe him because we didn't give him an Oscar for Jaws or ET. Thank you for listening to Two Drink Cinema for another episode. Uh, make sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> and Twitter. Um, Sorry, we're singing Anastasia. <laughs> Enjoy some Anastasia Palaszczuk. I'm out of love. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, or subscribe on whatever podcast platform you're listening on. We're on a few now. Um, yes. So enjoy that. Uh, get in touch through any of the social channels. Uh, we will be back with more next time. Thanks for listening to this episode of Two Drink Cinema. Find Two Drink Cinema on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook by searching at Two Drink Cinema. This episode has been produced by Odd Socks Entertainment. For more of Odd Socks Entertainment's work, head to www.oddsocksentertainment.com.au.